Hey everyone, lovely to be here with you. Um, my name is Nicola Bird from the Floral Project. You can tell that from the big label by my name. Um, it's really, really nice to be here with you. I have, this is the first time I've had the chance to meet you all and to say hello and to connect with you, this group here. Um, I've been looking down all of the other previous classes and things that you get to do here and um, it's so cool what you've got going on here and I'm so so um, honoured if you like to, be, to get to be part of this so thank you so much for inviting me along to to speak with you today um, it's really nice to be here so um, I'd love to know um, if you are here on the call I'm going to be talking to you today about flowers about growing flowers cut flowers uh, specifically you know flowers for the vase and um, I'd be really curious to hear if there are any of you on this call here that want to share with me um, whether you've got um, whether you're an experienced gardener, whether you've never grown flowers before, like what you'd love to learn today. Um, you know, what's brought you here, really? Like, I would love to hear a little more from you um, just to let me know. Um, you know whether you're whether you're an absolute pro at this or whether you're a complete newbie because it will help me pitch it either way um so hi Teresa thanks for dropping me a little note there from Lincolnshire um so yeah I'd love to hear from you all and um, I want to make this as interactive as possible so if you want to type into the comments I've got a little bit of stuff that I want to talk to you about and then really I want to answer your questions and see how I can help right because I'll let me tell you a little bit about me and and the floral project and how I got started with growing cut flowers because it's the first time we've met. So just to give you a little bit of context about who I am and the level of expertise or not that I might have in this area, uh, just to, to give you the framework for that. So today I wanna to tell you a little bit about um, me and my inspiration for growing cut flowers. Um, hi, Jenny, utter newbie, I love it. Ah, Gillian, an, an expert who grows flowers. Um, so I'll tell you a little bit about me. I'm going to tell you a little bit about the type of cut flowers. I'm going to presume because when I do these talks, normally everyone's a complete newbie. So please excuse me, Gillian, you can chip in and help with some of the answers maybe when people are asking questions. If you are a bit more of a pro, you'll know uh, some of the stuff that I'm going to share and talk with you about. But um, I wanted to make it really simple for people because I want to encourage as many people as possible to grow cut flowers. So just keep typing in your questions. Um, I'll, I'll come to them, right? So I'm going to talk a bit and then I'll come to your questions. So I want to talk to you a little bit about the types of flowers. I want to share with you my top 10 cut flowers, the easiest ones I've found to grow, the most beautiful ones to grow, and, um, and five that you can get started with this month to make it really simple and easy for you. So um, I had never stepped into my garden until last year and at the, in January last year 2020 all of a sudden I my husband had asked me like what I wanted to what I would love for my birthday which is the beginning of February so he asked me right it's my birthday and it's our anniversary wedding anniversary so he said what would you like and I said well obviously I'd love some flowers I just I, I love having flowers about the house so have some flowers please and he said to me well if you do you know about the impact of the cut flower industry on the environment? Have, have you seen, like if you're in any way interested in the environment, you don't want to be getting flowers given to you for, for your birthday or for our anniversary. And I was, no, I, I hadn't ever considered it actually. And so I went off to do some research and what I found really shocked me about the, the air miles that are involved, about the chemicals, the processing, the refrigeration, the mass scale farming, the working conditions, the pollution into the water in local areas. And, and seeing that what happens is the flowers travel all the way across the world to get to us, have to be refrigerated, obviously, otherwise they wouldn't make it here, and, and chemically treated, that they arrive and they're all very uniform and they have no scent and they're very, um, they're like factory flowers, right? Which I hadn't ever really appreciated before. And so I just thought, well, that's it. I can never have flowers again. And I was a bit gutted, but I, there's no way I could order them after that. And um, yeah, and so you'll find they last for ages. 
right? When you when you order them and you get them, and they're not seasonal, British seasonal flowers, they will last for ages and ages and ages and ages. But it's mainly because they've all been treated with all these kind of chemicals and things. And people are bringing them into their houses and putting their faces in them and sniffing them. And anyway, <laughs> enough of the downside. But what happened for me is because I had been doing some research into it, obviously Facebook is very clever and it started to, to show me flower things in my Facebook feed. And one of the things that I suddenly started to see was I did, uh, stories of women who were growing their own, predominantly women, growing their own flowers, flower farmers in, the, in, in Britain, right? And how to grow your own cut flowers. And all of a sudden I was obsessed. Having never stepped in my garden before, I suddenly became obsessed with like, oh, I want to grow my own cut flowers for the corner of my desk and the corner of my daughter's desks because everyone had just started kind of thinking about homeschooling and that kind of thing at that point in the year. And so I started researching and YouTubing and, and getting courses and reading books and sowing seeds and got completely bitten by the flower bug and started growing and sowing and and all of a sudden I realized that I I just I I'd sowed way too many seeds and had way too many plants and um this was these were gonna this was gonna overfill my daughter's desk, right? And so I didn't wanna become a florist, like I have a a full-time job, right? Like I have a, my own business that I run aside from any of this. And um, so I didn't want to become a farmer florist. I didn't want to be a flower farmer. I didn't want to have to get up at 5 a.m. every day. I didn't want to recreate and turn this into a whole money-making business. So it just occurred to me that, well, I could donate my flowers. Like, where are they going to go? Well, I could donate them to people who need them. I could donate them to um, the local age concern where our local age concern people befrienders go and visit people but they spend an hour with them and then they have to go and see their next client and that I wanted a way for people to know that they were thought about all week long not just for the hour that the befriender was with them but that they could leave something behind so that someone you know like flowers just make you smile so leave them behind so that someone had a reminder of their befrienders visit to know that someone is thinking about them and growing flowers for them like how nice would that be and so that became my incentive for growing and I kept growing and then I was sharing some pictures on Instagram and people started asking me how are you doing that I want to do that too and so I don't really know how it's happened but I we now have there's about 3,000 gardeners all around the UK and we are all um, sowing and growing and giving cut flowers uh, to local charities in our in our local communities and uh, it's really grown hugely since last year. So this will be the first year we really have got like thousands of people with arm full of flowers to donate. And so I'm really excited to see as the, the flowers are all starting to pop up now because of the lovely weather um, to start to see all those flowers start, starting to be given away. It just warms my heart. And any of you who are gardeners that will know the highs and lows and um, the, 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 the joys and the tears of gardening, well, know that, um, well, for me personally, it just makes so much difference to know that when I'm crying because my little zippy greenhouse is blown over or the slugs have eaten everything or it's taking me ages to grow one thing and then it just keels over and dies. Um, it's, it's just so lovely to know that I'm doing it for something, like I'm part of something bigger. Because if it was just for me, I'd probably have <laughs> given up by now. But I... It just it keeps me going and it keeps me going that there's a whole community of us who are sowing and growing and giving together every month. And people started asking me about, like, how do I start? So I started creating guides and flower kits. And it's just it's grown and grown and grown. And ITV found out about us. And somehow I don't even know how they don't even know how. And they came and did a piece on us, um, on me, us, just me. <laughs> my daughters were helping out. My husband helps out. And um, and so it's been a, it's been a really fun year and I've just met some wonderful people doing this. And, and this these um, these flowers have become such a huge part of my life. I keep trying to stop and focus on my real job and I can't and just keep putting me back out into the garden again and learning all the time. So basically today I want to share with you. I want to share with you my like I want you to feel inspired. Right. I want you to catch some of my inspiration for the flower book. I want to show you how simple it is to get started. 
I am a living, breathing example of how little you can know and still have a hundred posies to give away over the course of a summer, right? Like, so I'm not, um, I am studying for my RHS certificate, but I, I, um, I'm figuring this out as I go. I'm learning a lot. I'm sharing what I learn with everyone that I possibly can. Um, and, and I want to just encourage more people to grow. Even if you grow for yourself, if you grow for other people, it's good for the bees and the butterflies. It's good for the environment. It's good for your health. It's good for your mental health. It's good for, I mean, there's no downside to it. And it's so cheap and easy to get started as well. And so why wouldn't we? Right. I mean, I don't know. I didn't for 48 years, so 49 years. So <laughs> who knows why we don't. But but hopefully you get excited today and you see it simple and and that, that you can you can start right with wherever you are right now. You can start. So I started out. I had no knowledge. I had no flower beds. I had no compost or pots or I had nothing. And still I managed to starting this time, round about this time last year, to, to grow enough flowers to give away like 100 bunches last, last year. So if I can do it, anyone can do it, basically. So let me tell you how, right? The simplest way I know how. I'm just checking all the comments and things. Oh, thank you for your lovely comments. Yeah, so I love it that some of you are newbies here. So um, yeah, brilliant, okay. So. I'm just going to make it really simple, right? So I want to break it down into there are lots of there are so many different types and ways you can divide up flowers and plants, but I'm just going to do it in a really simple divide them into four and ignore all the others that don't fall into this category, okay? At the moment, just to make it really simple. So I'm going to forget about daffodils and tulips and uh, perennial plants and shrubs and fur I'm going to leave all of that to one side so I, I'm just taking them out because what I want to talk to you about the easiest way to grow cut flowers right so I'm going to I'm telling you I'm ignoring a whole load right so I know that um so what I want to tell you about is first of all hardy annuals right now this is written on seed packets so if you look for hardy annual seeds right so all annuals they you sow them they set seed, uh, they, they, sorry, you sow them, they grow, they flower, they set seed and they die all in the course of a year and they make the most beautiful cut flowers. They're really simple, they're really easy. If you don't like what you grow, you just grow something different next year, right? They don't, you get to start again and create a beautiful patchwork of flowers that's different every year if you want it to be. Right? Or you find out which ones you love and then you grow more of those and less of the other ones. It's, you're not creating an established garden where, um, where you know, over the years you develop and grow your garden. I mean, I know lots of people love to do that and starting to kind of get interested in that bit myself. But I'm really loving the, the kind of production of flowers. So I have a dedicated area in my garden now where I've built, raised no dig beds, which I can tell you about, um, on top of my lawn. That's just my cut flower patch. So it means that um, I have all my cut flowers in one area. I can go around and cut them all in the evening with a glass of wine or a gin and tonic on a summer's evening and cut them all in one go. And it's not about having a pretty garden full of flowers. It's about having uh, a, a garden full of plants with no flowers because you've cut them all off right, to give them away. So your hardy annuals are the first group. Now, they are um, so they, they grow. They do their whole thing in a year. But they can handle frost, which is why they're hard. <laughs> right? They're hardy, which means they can handle frost. Most of them can go down to like minus five. Some of them can go as low as minus 20. So I always start my seeds off in a, in a greenhouse under cut. Well, actually, I start them all on my kitchen windowsill because I love getting all excited when the first little one pops up. Start them on my kitchen windowsill. I'm going to talk to you about the whole sowing and growing thing. Right. But I start them off under cover and I. I'm a little bit different from most gardeners in that I start in the autumn with my hardy annuals and I sow and I normally sow about five different seeds every month all the way through winter and into the beginning of spring of my hardy annuals. So I'm starting to I just sowed my kind of my last of my hardy annuals now. And so every month I sow them starting all the way actually from the end of August all the way through. And then those those plants, some of them, the ones that I said earlier, are all starting to be ready to go into the garden now. 
and they will flower, be the first ones to flower. The ones that I sowed a little bit later, they'll take a few more weeks, but they will kind of flower later in, make sure I've got a whole, whole summer full of flowers. So hardy annuals, a lot of gardeners sow them in the autumn and in the spring, just to make it really simple. I, I like to I like to sow every month, so I sow all the way through winter. You know, hardy annuals, they can handle frost. You sow them, you grow them, you plant them out in the garden about this time of the year. As soon as the soil is warm enough for a bare bottom, you can start planting them out into the garden when they're big enough. And I'll show you what big enough is in a minute. So, um, but do, if, if you've got some under cover and you're about to sow them out and you think, oh, it's lovely, the weather's so nice right now, just wait till after the weekend because it's there's snow forecast on Monday where I am in Surrey. What do you know? So uh, don't put them out just yet. Just wait for this really cold snap to pass and then you can start planting them out. They can handle it. If there are a few frosty nights, they can handle it. So they include things like your sweet peas, your larkspur, if you've ever heard of Ami, um, your calendula, your snapdragons. Right, you just look on any seed packet and it'll say hardy annuals, and you know that those can those can take some frost. If it gets really cold, I might put a bit of fleece over them, but they they are tough. They are really tough. In fact, they thrive when it's colder. Uh, the next group I want to talk to you about, they are called the half hardy annuals. So again, they grow, do their thing in a year. Um, but they are like the big, they are the like kind of really flowery flowers. They can't handle any frost, which is why they're only half hardy. So they don't like frost at all. Now they include things like cosmos, zinnia, phlox. Um, they're really pretty flowers. I'll show you some pictures of some of these if you don't know what they are. And um, in, in a moment, I've got some nice pictures to show you. But those are the ones that we can start sowing and we're starting to sow them now. So this is why this is the perfect time to do this workshop actually. Anything that's a half hardy annual, you can sow now and we sow them under cover and we look after them under cover. And again, I'll talk to you about what under cover means in a moment. And then we plant them out after your last frost because they can't handle frost. If you put them out before the last frost day into your garden, they'll just die as soon as there's a frost. And you don't want that after you spend loads of time costing them, singing to them, stroking them, talking to them, giving them all names. That's what I do anyway. Um, the last thing you want is to plant them out and then they die. So what um, my last frost isn't actually until the end of May, 20th of May, which really surprised me when I realised how late it is. So you can Google it or there's resources on my blog that let you know when your last frost date is. So you want to grow them under cover and then you put them out. So now is a perfect time to be sowing them because they'll take six to eight weeks to get garden ready size. And uh, we sow them now, we grow them on, we look after them. And then for me, last week in May, beginning of June, I'll see what the weather's like. That's when they'll go out into the garden and those things will take off and flower all the way through until the first frost date, which for me is right at the end of October. So I know I'm going to have flowers from sort of June, July, all the way through. Even if you started today, you would start having flowers by the, probably the beginning of July and july august september october four months of flower giving and you can give a lot of flowers in that time especially if you grow the ones that i'm going to talk to you about because they grow so many flowers so um so now if you're starting now half hardy annuals are the ones that you want to be talk, thinking about and i'll show you which ones i would recommend um then there are so that's your your hardy annuals your half hardy annuals and then there are biennials and biennials are ones that we sow in June and July and they they give off lots of green. They look like they're not doing much. Mine look really raggedy at the moment. And all of a sudden in early spring, they need to go through a winter. And what they're doing is they're putting on some hefty roots under the ground. They need to go through a winter and then they flower the following spring. So mine are, my first wallflowers are just starting to flower now, like the really early ones are starting to flower now. And um, they're going to get covered in snow. They get covered in all sorts over the winter, but they, they're they really tough and they, they need that cold. And then they come up in the spring and there'll be some of the first flowers to come up in the in the garden. So you don't need to worry about that yet. Those are things like wallflowers and honesty and sweet William and sweet rocket, foxgloves. 
So you don't need to worry about any of those at the moment, but just make a note that come June or July, June and July, is when you want to start sowing seeds that are labelled biennials. Okay, so you don't need to worry about those now. Don't need to worry about your hardy annuals now. Half hardies are the things you want to be sowing. And then lastly, the fourth category, and I'm just going to call them the queen flowers. It won't say this on the packet, but they're basically your big, um, they're, they're your dahlias, they're your um, roses, they're your peonies, they're your big flouncy flowers. And if you were a florist, you would you would grow those flowers and then you'd build your bouquets out around those flowers. And you may or may not have roses and peonies and dahlias. Um, but they they are wonderful plants if you can include them in your cut flower patch just to add that extra element of wow into your flowers okay so there's a whole bunch there that um for me i buy my roses as as bare root roses i buy my um my peonies as bare root peonies and grow them on as plants and those will come back year after year after year now is also a really good time for dahlias. So you've arrived just at the right time for dahlias as well. So if you go to your local, um, if you go to, if you go and look online, um, there are lots of gardening shops. If you just look for buy dahlias online, you'll be able to find the tubers. So they look like ugly, great big things with fingers on them. I should have bought one in to show you actually. And now is the time we pop them up, start them off under cover. And then they can go out into the garden at the beginning of June after the frosts as well. And they will flower their hearts out and they'll give you the most outrageous, most gorgeous, most beautiful flowers. Um, so I've got a picture of those as well to show you in a moment. So you've just arrived at the right time for all the most beautiful flowers. And how good is that? So in terms of sowing and growing them, I've got, so you get your seeds, right? I know you know what a seed packet looks like, right? So you get your seeds. And so you can buy these at your local garden centre. You can buy them. Um, you can buy them. There's lots of seed providers in the UK. You can get them from the Floral Project. You can you can get seeds off your friends, off your neighbours, off your family. Just get some seeds. They're like they're so affordable that um, you know. And and one packet you can you can save them as long as you keep them somewhere dry and dark like in a cupboard somewhere that isn't too warm, you can you, you can use them and sow them again the following year as well. So you always get way more than you can possibly sow. You will sow hundreds by accident, but hey ho. Um, and then you'll start sowing less as you get a bit more confident, start sowing fewer as you get more confident. And um, but but it's, it's so affordable to do so. Right. So I'm going to I'm going to give you a list of like five that would be great ones to start with this month in a moment. Now, you can sow them in pretty much anything, old yogurt pots, um, old meat trays, vegetable trays. You don't have to spend a fortune on pots and seed trays and all the rest of it. Um, you just need to make sure that whatever you use is plastic and it's and you can you can um, make holes in the bottom for drainage. So all your seeds don't rot in wet compost. And so I want to show you two different ways that I sow. One is that I so into like seed trays so these are some snapdragons here if you can see them in this light so here i literally and i've sprinkled the seed way too close on these but um so i have sowed some snapdragons here so they take up a tiny amount of space i put that on my windowsill in my kitchen and as soon as these start to germinate i move them out and what's called undercover so undercover means you need to have a space that's in your garden. So some people are lucky enough to have a real greenhouse. One day when I'm a grown up, I will have a proper greenhouse. But I didn't have one. So I just bought a cheap plastic zippy thing off um, from Amazon. Actually, my first one was from my local garden centre and then off Amazon. And it's just had three little shelves in it, goes up against the wall. You need to weight it down. Every time the wind blows, we have a big windy time uh, floral project. People, bless them, someone always loses a greenhouse because they haven't weighed it down and they have to start all over again. But so that is the downside of them. They're cheap. They're really practical. You can just use them for everything, but they do have a tendency to blow off around the garden. So you need to put them, anchor them down and put them somewhere where hopefully they won't blow away. I then graduated into buying a whole plastic greenhouse which has got like 12 shelves in it, which is fantastic for me. Um, so that's my undercover growing space, my greenhouse. So for, 
50 quid roughly you can buy 30 quid 50 quid you can buy yourself a pretty ugly but very functional greenhouse right and and you're going to love it you're going to spend most of your life in there once you um once you start growing and so um I would put these out into my little greenhouse. The other thing that some of us do at the Floral Project, I haven't done this, but I've, some of my members do it, and it's such such a great, easy, simple thing to do, where they don't have a greenhouse, they don't have outside space for a greenhouse. They've just been buying those white plastic crates that you use to store kids' toys or books or whatever in. You know, they're about that big, uh, with a plastic lid. And what they do is they put their pot, they put their pots like this into their white plastic um crate and they put it outside in the day and then they can bring it in at night or they can put the lid on if it's really heavy rain and they can take the lid off again so that they they're getting exposed to some weather and sunshine and they put the lids on again at night so they're using that as a makeshift greenhouse so there you go there's another solution there's no reason that you can't create some undercover space but they do need to go out because if you leave them on your on your on your kitchen window so they cannot get enough light and they all bend over and they get very unhealthy and you just can't grow them big enough inside to be healthy plants when they go outside. Um, so you, what you do is you is you is you oh, the camera is like the opposite way around to my real life if you know what I mean. So it's really hard for me to figure out where I'm going. Um, so what you can do is when they when they have their first set of true leaves like this, you would prick them out and pricking them out just means that you gently lever them out. You can just use the label, for example, you lever them out and you pot them on and you put them into their own pot. Right. So this it looks a bit like a snapdragon. This is actually a Gadisha. And you grow them on and these are like nine centimeter pots. You can buy them off Amazon or you can just use their own yogurt pot. Right. No need to be fancy. And um, you grow them on in their pots like this, again, still undercover until they're about this size. So this little fella, uh, after the cold snap, what I will do is I will harden him off, which means that you just leave him outside in the day, bring him back in at night, outside at day, back in at night for about seven to 10 days. And that lets him toughen up. His leaves will toughen up, his stems will toughen up which means that when he goes out in the garden, he is more resistant to slugs and harsh English weather, right? Wind and all the rest of it. He's just tough enough. So you do need to harden them off. And then I can plant him out. He's big enough. So he's good to go. So, so prick them out. So they've got their own pot and then they grow like this. And he, you can see his roots are coming out the bottom. If I were to turn him upside down and empty him out, which I won't because I'm inside the house, um, you would see as a, a, a root ball here, he's filled his pot and he'll be ready to pop out, pop straight into the ground and he'll be away. The other way of sowing that I like doing is into individual modules like this. So you can see here where I sowed one seed per module. Right. And as they've all come up, if one doesn't come up, I just pop another seed in. But all of these. Get that 100% germination on these. These are snapdragons. So I just put literally one seed in each, put them on the kitchen windowsill, pop them outside as soon as they started to germinate and they've all been growing on in my little greenhouse outside. So then you plant them out into the garden and, um, and then they grow and then you cut them. <laughs> and you don't need a degree in floristry. You just cut them. You can't get it wrong with flowers. So I cut them, I bunch them all together, I wrap some round brown paper, I stick a floral project sticker on, a bit of of tape on, and then I take them and I give them. So really simple. But I want to share with you the, um, I am going to come to questions in a moment. So um, <laughs> you're so funny, your little chats you're having together. Um, so any questions, start typing them in now because I'm going to come to questions in a moment. But what I'm going to do is I want to share my screen with you and show you my top 10 cut flowers. So if you if you really don't know where to start, these are some of my favorite. And then the five that I want to share with you for next uh, just that you can start right now. Uh, right. Let me see if I can get this to share. Oh, here we go. Right. Hopefully 
hopefully you can see my screen here. Uh, yes, this is, should be sharing. It says it's sharing, so all good. Right, so um, and these are my top 10 flowers, and I'm going to tell you why. So Cosmos is... My, I wanted to show you pictures because if I just say it, it won't mean anything to you. And I know these these are a bit zoomed in, these pictures. I didn't have any that were a bit more zoomed out. I'm going to make a note to make, take some of those this year. But Cosmos are so cool. They, are, they fall into my seeds to sow now. So they come in all sorts of pinks and purples and um, fluffy bits and... Um, also, you can't go wrong. Anything you buy that's a Cosmos is going to look beautiful. You can see about five different varieties just in this picture. They come in pinks and whites and slightly purples. And they are actually you can get yellows and oranges as well. But I just love pinks and purples. And they are cut and come flowers, which means the more you cut them, the more they grow. And um, they will give you the most flowers per square meter in your garden than anything else you could sow. They are so easy. They are so simple. They are so beautiful. When you cut them, they smell, they don't smell flowery. They smell almost like cucumbery. They're, they've got a really fresh odor to them. And they're, they, they just do so well in the vase. And they're so easy to grow. They are a definite, definite must. So put those on your list, Cosmos. Then next to Sweet Peas, I think, are my absolute favorite. I think in the picture for this talk, you could see me with armfuls of Cosmos. They're just so great. Sweet peas, there's my next favorite one. So I grow these in all kinds of different colors. Um, they smell so beautiful, depending on who you're giving them to. Like I know that the I give mine to uh, Woking Age Concern and the elderly people there, they just love the smell of sweet peas. It kind of takes them back to their childhood so many memories with sweet peas for them again really easy to grow they need something to climb up but the more you cut them the more they branch out and stem and give you more flowers so um my second favorite or maybe my first favorite i don't know um i think i've i've started about 100 sweet peas off this year so we'll see if i can find places to put them in the garden um all sorts of different ways I have of growing, of supporting them and growing them this year, but they're really simple. So if you've, um, these are a hardy annual, but you can still now start, if, you, if you're really quick, you could start some off now um, indoors and put them outside uh, as soon as they get big enough. I would say you could start these off outside, but the mice love them and they will just dig up the seeds and run away with them if you plant them outside. So please don't do that with sweet peas. You do need to start them inside until they're a few inches tall and then you can plant them out into the garden. But they come in such an array of colors and they're just, they are beautiful. Okay, these are called Malope, M-A-L-O-P-E. And I only discovered these last year. I bought them a bit by accident. And oh my goodness, they give you armfuls of flowers. So I'm growing them in white and I'm growing them in a mixture of pinks and purples and whites this year as well. So they give that they're like they're like cosmos and they're real two for one. You get loads of foliage and loads of flowers all off one plant. And these things just flowered and flowered and flowered and flowered all summer long. So, again, you can probably you can. These are a hardy annual. These ones you can direct sow them into the garden now um, and you'll be fine. You should have flowers this summer from those. Zinnias, so a lot of people know zinnias. Um, this is, I, I, I'm, I do like the bright colours. They come in lots of bright colours, but I also really love the, the really simple um, green and white and cream ones that you can get. They complement your other flowers really well. They need a really, with all of the cut flowers, actually, they do need loads of sunshine and zinnias in particular. They, I think they're from South America, so they really, really love all of the, the sun. They thrive in the sun. So zinnias, again, very easy to grow, very popular. You can start sowing those now, um, no problem, half hardy. Rudbeckia, so again, I hadn't heard of these when I was new to gardening, but they are um, like mini sunflowers, as you can see. So they only grow about 50, 60 centimeters tall, maybe. So they're not really, really tall and unwieldy like sunflowers, but they give you the same smiles as sunflowers do. So that's a real pop of bright color in your garden. So Rudbeckia. Uh, now there are sweet peas in this, but what I what I'm sharing this one with you for is because of flocks. 
So flocks are these beautiful, like coffee colored flowers here. Um, and they're just, they're such pretty little elegant flowers. Again, they are half hardies, so you can sow them now. They're pretty easy to grow and you get them in all kinds of colors. I'm going to, I think with our, with our next flower kit, we've, we've got them in a mixture of colors because I wanted to, like when I put together our flower kits, I always want to have as many kind of different color combinations as possible so that you can walk through your, my own idea is that you can walk through your cut flower patch and you can pick whatever takes your fancy that looks like it'll go well together this week. It's, um, it's, we don't, like at the floral project, we don't kind of start with bouquets in mind and then try and grow those particular flowers. It's that we grow all the really good cut flowers and then what you'll find is that nature will provide a different bouquet style for you every week. You just pick what's there, put them together, and they always look fab. Um, snapdragons, everybody loves snapdragons. So um, I grew these for the first time last year and they were just gorgeous. The tall spires that you can just, I mean, I just end up giving handfuls of these on their own um, from in the garden. And they are, um, you can start, if you start, you could start sowing these now and you would get flowers really late in the summer. Um, so they are hardy annuals, which means they can handle the frost. You could have sowed them earlier in the year, but you could start right now and you would get flowers by the end of the year. Now, this is a flower called a scabiosa, which is a horrible name for a beautiful flower. And you can't really tell from this picture, but they are long, really long, thin stems with these like balls of, of color that just pop in any arrangement. Again, sometimes I just gave handfuls of these, uh, but they're really nice to mix up with the other flowers because they've got this distinctive kind of shape and, and real brightness about them. And they dry into beautiful seed heads as well an added bonus and mint i've added mint in here because people don't really think about that as a cut flower but it's such a brilliant complement to your cut flowers it gives the greenery it gives the foliage without you having to grow shrubs particularly and specially for your cut flowers really easy to grow grow it in a pot if you haven't learned that already it takes over your garden otherwise but it, you know, it gives an additional scent to the flowers and uh, a freshness to them and a real aliveness just because they have such a vivid green color. The mint is such vivid green. And then finally, dahlias. So dahlias come in all sorts of sizes and colors and styles, but they are flamboyant and they're beautiful. This is a Cafe Au Lait Royale, which I discovered last year. I'd never grown them before. I grew about, uh, how many did I grow? About 20 different varieties last year. And um, they just astounded me. You just basically plant them and then you water them a lot and you stand back and you just watch them as they do their thing. They are, they are amazing, amazing flowers. So that's my like top 10. If you were only going to grow 10, it was so hard. I kept putting in slides and taking them out and going, no, no, that one. No, no, that one. No, no, that one. So there were, there are more. Like in, in the floral project, we grow 60 flat, sixty different flowers over the course of a year because we do five every month. And, and I love all of them. So it was really hard to pick. Um, now, I wanted to show with you the top five that um, certainly we're all going to be sowing um, over the, in this month and next month at the floral project. So us 3,000 gardeners are going to be sowing these and, and, and hopefully a lot of other people as well. So, and some of these you'll see from the previous slide, because how could they not be in my top 10? So Cosmos, get your hands on some Cosmos seeds. We are we are sowing Cosmos, like our, our whole April flower kit is nothing but Cosmos. I never normally do that, but I was just like, there are so many varieties to choose from. They're so easy to grow. They're so great for a beginner. So uh, Cosmos, get yourself some Cosmos seeds and start sowing those. Now is the perfect time. Um, these are flocks. So similar to I showed you before, do you remember the little coffee colored flowers that I showed you that came with the sweet peas? Well, these are them in white. Um, I'm going to be sewing, like I said, a mixture of colors this year, but they're so pretty. Look at those. They're gorgeous. Uh, this is Nicotiana. So this is also known as the tobacco plant and it's um, got a very distinctive scent. 
Um, and so this is one that actually, this is the one I'm growing for the first time this year, but this is another great one to sow at this time of year. And you can see how it's just got a different type of flower. It's got these like long flower heads, um, which are just gonna, I don't know, they're just gonna be beautiful with things like corn flowers and um, scabiosa and sweet peas. They're just gonna be a beautiful complement to that. So Nicosiana, that's called. Zinnias. This is such a great time for zinnias. Again, you can see my fetish for like green, but they come in all sorts of bright colors, all sorts of bright colors. So zinnia is a great one to be sowing now or into next month. Um, and then straw flowers. So I, I love straw flowers. They have such a weird, wonderful texture and they're great for bouquets. They come in all sorts of different colors, but they are also, they really come into their own when it gets to the end of the year and you can dry them. And then you can give dried flowers um, away as your posies. So I didn't, I didn't get really, I, I did some dried flower wreaths for myself and my daughter helped me do some last year um, just for around the house. But this year I want to really focus more on growing flowers to be able to give 12 months of the year. And straw flowers are, are my venture into that because I'd really like to dry some and have them to give not only as part of my posies, but also um, on through throughout the um, the autumn as well. So I'm going to dry some this year. And finally, just for a change of something else, the Breeza Maxima, which is a grass. OK, so this adds a beautiful kind of airy quality to uh, posies and bunches that you might give away. It is a hardy annual, um, which means that you can sow it in the winter. No, no problem. You can sow it in autumn. You can sow it in spring. I'm actually going to direct sow it in May. So this is the one I'm not going to grow undercover. Uh, actually, I have started some undercover, but I'm going to um, direct sow this in May and it should just shoot up straight in the ground wherever I uh, sow it. And then it will self sow as well. So in autumn, it will it'll give over its seeds if I haven't cut it all back and given it away. It'll sow its own seeds and then in autumn it will start growing again. And then next spring I'll have uh, more of this beautiful grass to give away. So um, so a mixture there of flowers and grasses for you. And then the last thing I wanted to show you was this, this lovely picture of um, my charity that I give to. They, um, they, you know, Woking Age Concern, they go take the flowers, they go give them out, um, their befrienders drop them off. And, and I don't get to meet these people. I've never met any of these people, but... Um, they 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 are really happy for their pictures to be taken with their flowers and sent over to me and happy for these to be shared with you to inspire other people to grow. So you can see I'm not fancy. I'm not a really uh, good um, florist or anything. Um, and actually, working age concern, but we haven't taken the best photos of these as they could. But like this this one on the left is just a handful of what's in there. Uh, Cornflowers, Scabiosa and Agapanthus, I think, all in there, just a massive bundle of cornflowers that I had. These are all different yellow and orange dahlias in the middle here. And this gentleman on the end has got uh, just a handful, a bunch of simple sweet peas to put into a jam jar. So I either give them away wrapped in this brown paper or, or I will put them into jam jars and take a load of jam jars and drop them off at working age concern. So I wanted to show you that last slide to inspire you. So let me come back to um, to you guys. Right. And we're back here again now. <coughs> Excuse me. So really. It's over to you for questions from this point on, because I know that I've talked a lot. I've shared if there's anything that you've missed, you want me to say it again, just let me do it. Let me know. Um, but I hopefully you've been inspired today and you've seen that it's it's simple. You take some seeds and you sprinkle them on some peat free, please, compost that you can buy from your garden center that will cost you about four or five pounds for a massive bag of compost. Use your old food and yogurt pots, get yourself some seeds. And the brilliant thing about doing this is as soon as you start, you can't stop because now you've got like, like you're going to walk away from them and not do anything with them or talk to them or look at them again like they're they're such gorgeous little babies they kind of nature then takes over and you just follow its lead it, it'll show you what it needs to have done um right so i'm just looking at the comments and questions 
So total newbie, giving me the confidence to try. Brilliant. That's all I could wish for. And and there's most people who come and join me at the Floral Project are all newbies and they've never grown before. And the delight that they get from doing it, especially at a time like this where, you know, our gardens, you know, we are allowed to go out now, but like our gardens are the one place we've always been allowed to go through this whole pandemic. Um, there are my garden has been my uh like refuge it's been my my <laughs> escape when the inside of the house has all got too much it's to really to be drawn outside by nature and taken outside has just been so um so beautiful to to be outside instead of at my desk all the time so it's lovely um roger i missed the first bit was that rusia cuttings you had done uh and from sarah um I'm not sure which bit. Do you mean do you mean these? So like that's their snapdragons. That's Gadisha. It's not a cutting. I've grown that from seed. Um, and these are snapdragons as well. These are snapdragons as well. So they're not cuttings. They are all grown from seed. Cuttings is something I'm going to figure out this year. Since you just start with where you are, right? So I know about sewing. I don't know about cuttings, propagation, dividing, dried flowers. I've got plenty of time. I've got the rest of my life to learn all of that. So I've just started with the most simplest, easiest, most productive way, which is sow the seeds and grow the seeds. And that's it. I'll get fancy later. Um, very inspiring forward to giving it a go. Good. That's all I could wish for. Um, and then the rest is, is kind of chats and people enjoying it, I think love to be able to grow my own yeah like all those flowers that you get from that that people have given you or that you you give to other people like how amazing to have your own in your garden that when you want to to give flowers at somebody's birthday or you want to show your neighbor that you care that you've got flowers of your own you can just go out in the garden and cut them and give them i mean so it's such a nice thing to do so if there's no more questions then i think i will draw our talk to a close you can you can i'll pop back in here again in a couple of days so if you've got more questions that come up as you start sewing and growing just leave them for me here and i'll pop back under this video and um and, and answer them for you if i can help in any way then i will um as you can tell i'm very passionate about this project i'm so excited about how it speaks to the hearts and minds of such kind people that want to get involved and do it and um and i hope you end up being one of those so yeah thank you so much off to buy lots of seeds so um yeah good i'm glad i'm glad that's been helpful um oh so, so someone's asking about the project so um i hope it's okay to share this but the project is the floral project.co.uk that's the website you can go and find out all about it there um and the seeds and the guides and and my blog there so i write more than I've been able to explain here, but there's some more, more helpful information on there. Um, so yeah, you're welcome to, to come and join us all. There's no obligation to have Floral Project Seeds. Anyone and everyone is welcome. So um, please do come follow us along there and hopefully I'll get invited back here and I can come do another talk with you all again shortly. Okay, thank you for letting me come and talk about my favorite thing <laughs> for an hour. Um, Kelsey said, oh, you can talk for as long as you like. And I said, oh, I'll probably carry on going all day, so I won't. Um, and, and maybe at some point in the future, I can come back and I'll give you a tour of my garden and how it's all set up and all the rest of it, because StreamYard is great for being able to, to take you out and show you around everything I've got going on. So anyway, that said, I will love you and leave you. Go and enjoy the sunshine if you've got it while you can, and then huddle up warm um, over the next uh, week or so you can still sow anything while the weather is changeable because you're just going to be putting it inside for the seeds to germinate and then but only plant out once once the cold snap has gone and so you don't kill all your babies as soon as you put them outside in the garden okay um you're very welcome you're very welcome you're very yeah off to buy seeds and yogurt i love it okay guys i'll speak to you soon take care thank you so much for your time